morning. Morning. Hello. You just wanted to get pictures of my ass again, didn't you? <laughs> Everybody's looking at my ass. I hope you're happy. I'm basically pulling some weeds out of the garden. I can't spend much time in here because it's soaking, dripping wet. And when you walk around in your garden when it's wet, you compress the soil. Which I have a really nice battery operated um, cultivator so I can uncompress the soil after all the rain goes away. But I haven't even looked at the rain gauge yet, but I can tell you we've had mega amounts of rain. So one of the things I do with these weeds as I pull them out is I feed them to my chickens and my rabbits. When you have a small farm, like we do, um, you can't raise enough grain for your animals. Uh, you just don't have the uh, amount of land it takes, which means you're buying a lot of feed. So whenever you can save on feed, it's better for you, better for the environment, better for everything else. Mostly, it saves you money. Lots and lots of money. Let's check my rain gauge. Yeah, we got three and a half inches of rain last night. So that's a lot. So, one of the reasons that everybody in the modern world was already completely angst out and running around like chickens with their heads cut off before coronavirus even hit is because people only actually need four things. They need air, which is free. We don't take care of it. Right now, if you're in a public place, it's full of coronavirus, but air is free. So what else do we need? We need water, we need food, we need shelter. Most people in the modern world have no control of any of those things. The only way they can control them is to go to work, punch in a time clock, and get a check and hope it's gonna cover their bills. Now, a lot of you are saying, well, you're lucky, you have land and you have a garden and you have this and that and the other thing. The difference between me and people that are in an apartment right now saying, gee, I wish I had a house at least, much less a farm. The difference is I'm willing to pick shit with the chickens. My dad used to say, he had a saying, he used to say, he was full of sayings, you'll hear many of them, but he used to have a saying, he used to say, um, everybody's always looking for an excuse to wet the bed, which means nobody ever owns the predicament they're in. When you grow any amount of your own food, you're that much more connected to the things you actually need. When you catch any amount of your own water, we have, we will look at that later at some other point. I have several water catchment systems on this place. When you catch part of your own water, you take back part of that. Nobody is gonna be 100%, I have everything, I live off the grid right away. Okay, it's a harsh life. How, you know, where does my expertise come from? Why am I any better to tell you what I'm doing than anybody else? I lived for 14 years of my life completely off the grid. No running water, no electricity. This is an upgrade for me, this place. I lived in the woods. It was 10 miles to the nearest teeny tiny little town. You may not have. I have 2.4 acres here, okay? How did I get that? I went to the realtor and said, I need a place in the country that's not zoned where I can have livestock and a garden. It needs to be under $30,000. That's how I got this place. This place was seconds from being condemned, the house. And I told you about the shop already. It, the big selling point was you could bulldoze it down cheap. I bought it anyway, $28,000, okay. The other place, the place I bought next door, last 
what was it, year or year before last? Last year. Last year, the place I bought, that's $30,000. Altogether, I spent $48,000 for, no, 48, 50. Oh. I don't know, I'm not good at math. Let's go shopping. <laughs> All right. So in a garden, this is not a huge garden. This is a tiny garden, but it's what they call a, um, What's the word for it? Now I can't find it. Intensive? It's an intense, thank you, honey. It's an intensive garden. So what I do is I take one crop out, I put another one out. I use tons of fertilizer. I cultivate all the time. I work the soil. I put stuff back in, I take stuff out. Okay. One of the things you have to do if you wanna have crops, especially now, I'm having to learn a whole new way of gardening because of climate change. Things that used to do well for us no longer do well. Um, bugs that we never used to have, we now have. Um, so I'm having to change up what I do. What I've always done though, in order to get, to make sure that you're gonna have any kind of croppage at all, what you have to do is plant a variety of different plants. And not only um, different, like, you know, we have, we have, um, peas and Swiss chard and spinach and corn and um, tomatoes and peppers and carrots and squash and zucchini and cucumbers and pole beans and lettuce and beets and kale and cabbage. And that, of course, in the back, we'll talk about that later, that is, um, those are plants you don't have to plant them every year. That's my garlic, my fennel and all that stuff. You, they, they grow from year to year, so. In the raised beds, right? In the raised beds. So they're, um, they, they're, um, perennials? another word I can't think perennials? of. Perennials? No, not perennials, that means every year. Oh. So, yeah, but they come back every year. Okay, okay. and you don't have to replant them. So that's what that is. Now the garlic you kind of have to replant, but we'll talk about that more later. Okay, but not only do I have a variety of different vegetables, within the vegetables, I always plant more than one kind because one variety might do really well that year while another doesn't. So that's a whole lot of it. There's stuff that people don't know about certain plants that's cool to know. If you cut your romaine instead of pulling it when you, when you harvest your romaine, all these little heads, these were great big heads uh, that, we all, that we cut and ate and now all these little heads have come back up and we'll be able to eat off of those again and again and again. One of the things I wanna show you today is there are things that happen, like we had a high wind last night. Okay, so if Lynn will follow me, I'll show you a trick that I learned from, actually from my mother who learned it from her father. Like I said, we're going on six generations of poor people just making do. them later but in the windstorm last night some of the corn plants got knocked down so right this year I don't feel like I can afford to let anything go I feel like I need to make all my food happen so and one of the reasons I'm growing so much more corn this year than I normally do is I don't know what the feed situation is going to be and I can dry the corn stalks and make hay and any extra corn I have, the animals can eat. Okay, so you can see this one's blown down. So you take, this is some of that compost from the composting barrels in the chicken yard. And you can see what good soil that is. So I take the corn, I stand it up, and I just put a bunch of that right next to it. And that stands it back up. And then it'll, it'll re-root and it'll fix itself. Same thing here, I've got actually three down there. It may be harder to stand them up because they're heavier. So I'll have to use more dirt. And of course, by using the dirt, you're just enriching the soil here. And in fact, I'll dump what I have left. I'll just dump it around the plants and go ahead and fill those beds. So, now, here's the truth. The animals are a lot of work. The plants 
about twice as much work. You want to get any kind of, of uh, amount of food out of them at all, you have to watch them, you have to weed. Weeding's my least favorite thing, uh, but like I said, it does help feed the chickens and the rabbits. Uh, you have to weed them. If you don't, people say, well, why do you have to weed? Well, if you don't weed, it crowds out your plants and they don't produce. They don't produce as well and they don't pr produce as much. It's harder to take care of them. You can't cultivate the soil. It's just, it's a nightmare. So, it's, um, it's not, you know, it's not all fun and games. And you don't have to do everything I do. If you have a postage-sized um, yard, a postage stamp sized yard get some pots start a pot garden not that kind of pot you freaking dopers <laughs> you know container garden okay a container garden start a container garden build a container garden what can you use for containers anything anything shit that you were gonna throw away all right all you know and work it, you know, it's going in the trash anyway. Old Folgers containers and plastic milk jugs. Plastic milk jugs. You just want to, we'll talk about that later too, because it's like I have a container garden that I will show you at some point uh, that takes up no space. It's literally hanging on a fence. Okay? If you are living in an apartment, that apartment we're talking about, and you're really worried right now, because it's like, you know, you can't, you're having trouble with your bills and, and nothing's coming in and you don't, by God, start filling some pots, put them in the windows. Put them in the windows. You'll be surprised how much just having a few herbs makes you more connected to what you really need. Thank you, keep tuning in, and goodbye. <laughs>